Hey there, CPO here. I want to show you where I'm at with the FPV racing quad. Most of these components were uh, generously provided by ReadyMade RC for the purpose of building and uh, in reviewing uh, this uh, equipment. Big shout out to ReadyMade RC for making this build possible. So let me show you what I've got going on here. Um, I'm still working on the actual edited build video of the top plate. And the reason I haven't finished it yet is because I'm still working on how I want this thing to be. So I post up pictures and uh, on Facebook, and I get a lot of great advice from people who have been there and done that. And I'm one to learn from other people. So uh, I've made some changes based on that feedback, and uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that. There is one thing I want to note. I do have, uh, so so one of the feedback I keep getting is, uh, that in a crash, this antenna will uh, tend to break the SMA connector at the video transmitter, which is a very common problem. So, uh, you know, one of the recommendations was to get everything secured, um, you know, and I could put a, a zip tie right here uh, to secure everything. Um, but the best recommendation that I keep getting over and over and over again is to get a little uh, SMA to SMA adapter cable so that I can have a cable between the antenna and the video transmitter. So that way if the antenna gets a big hit, um, it's not directly pivoting on that uh, transmitter. So I do have one of those cables, a 10 centimeter cable on the way. It's just not here yet. So uh, I can't show it to you in this video, but uh, my plan is to have a cable and maybe, uh, maybe stick the antenna like right here, like strap it along this post or something with the cable running up to the transmitter. But either way, uh, this is pretty darn close. If you don't have an extension, this is probably the best way to go. Like I said, uh, I need to probably strap one more zip tie right there to lock that in place so all of the pressure uh, basically ends up on that post and not on the video transmitter. Uh, some other things I got a lot of uh, advice on. The very first time I did this, my GoPro camera was down here on a camera plate. And my because of that, um, I couldn't put the camera in in the frame, so I put the camera up top, and uh, and that made it exposed in the wind. Well, one of them's going to be exposed because I can't have two cameras and have both of them uh, protected. But I started doing some thinking, and I'm like, you know what? Uh, the camera has a connection to my system. It's got wires coming out the back. So my thought is, you know, pretty much anything that is connected to something else on the quadcopter I want to protect. So that meant that I moved the GoPro up to the top here uh, because if it gets knocked off, it just gets knocked off. Um, it's not connected to anything else, so it's a standalone item. But if the CCD cam gets knocked off, then it drags cords and, and messes with my video transmitter and all that other stuff. So, uh, so I decided to, to put that in there and you can see my uh, CCD cam is uh, inside there. I went ahead and put this little plate on just to protect it, but uh, any frontal impact, I should be just fine with this particular uh, setup. And uh, you can see, um, I actually ended up mounting, there's a bracket, it says, uh, you know, from drone frames, DF, and uh, I just mounted the, the mounting hole through the F uh, for this pivoting bracket here. And it works out great. I still have a little bit of room. I can tilt down a little bit or up a little bit, depending on my specific needs. Uh, and it's a smidge off-center. You can kind of see it if you look in the circle. But on video, you can't really tell that it's off-center by just a couple of uh, millimeters. So, uh, But uh, that's how I have that mounted. Um, so now that's protected. Uh, I put the camera, the GoPro camera, further back. Number one, that moves the weight closer to the middle, so center of gravity... Uh, is a little bit more uh, centralized, which means my battery can be further in um, on the on the back side. But uh, I also moved it back to protect it. Again, frontal hits, um, you know, it'll probably take a hit if it's a rolling deal, but if it's just a nosedive into something, uh, actually that, <laughs> that camera should might uh, be safe. Um, and so, oddly enough, uh, you would think that you would see uh, part of the frame in the view, but on the widest uh, GoPro setting, uh, you still can't see the frame. There, You might see just a little edge of the corner there, uh, but outside of that, um, it's all good to go. So I get good, clear, 
uh, video um, from it right there. So uh, that's that. My antennas, uh, I have one antenna strapped right here because remember this is the, uh, the G10 version, not carbon fiber. I can lay an antenna right along that um, and it won't attenuate the signal. So uh, my, uh, my one antenna is that way, uh, which gives me, so if I'm uh, running forward, uh, obviously that becomes very visible to my transmitter, even tilted way forward. And then I've got my 90 degree uh, uh, offset of that uh, pointed out forward here. Um, I debated pointing it up or pointing it forward. Um, I don't know how much it's going to matter uh, from a reception perspective, but uh, I wanted to get it as far away from this guy as I can. And so uh, so I put it here, and it is out for it's It's the most vulnerable thing on the quadcopter, but, you know, the worst thing that's going to happen is just going to bend out of the way whenever uh, whenever I take a hit. So uh, I think that that'll be fine. Um, but, hey, I'm always welcome to, uh, to suggestions if you have any other ideas. But right now, uh, as you can see, everything is very well protected, exception of the GoPro, and I don't have to run with the GoPro. Uh, but I do want to get some good video for you guys. So um, that's there. I can take this off and, uh, you know, run it without. I could take that off like that if I wanted to um, or just remove the strap entirely. Either way, uh, and then I just have to adjust the battery. I, I've got a little bit of room to push that battery further in there. Um, so uh, so we'll be good to go there. Uh, the other thing is I do have telemetry set up uh, on, uh, on this, as you can see. Uh, it's kind of hard to see. Right back here, um, I've got three connections. One of them is positive and negative from the battery. One of them is the beeper, a little speaker. And then the other one is the telemetry out, which goes to my receiver, which my receiver is actually mounted right here next to the video transmitter. Uh, I can mount it next to it because the antennas are up here. So that's not a problem if you're uh, thinking about that. Uh, but I've got telemetry. So... Uh, so why don't I show you how I have my transmitter set up really quick. Have fun, honey, and please try not to crash this time. All right. So this is my Tyrannus radio. Um, got a couple things going on. It's a pretty simple uh, model as far as... Uh, you know, you can get pretty complex with these uh, custom custom model development. I basically started with a fresh model and uh, did everything I needed to do just to get it running first with my uh, throttle, aileron, elevator, and rudder. Then I added in some uh, the ability to change the uh, conditions as far as being in rate mode or angle or horizon on this. So nothing uh, super fancy, um, but let me show you what I have here. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the menu items, but... All right, so the first thing here is I have my arm switch. So this is the same place I have throttle hold um, on my uh, helicopters. So generally in the back position, uh, throttle hold is engaged, and in the forward position, throttle hold is engaged, and the middle is arm. So that way, um, if I'm flying a, a whatever aircraft, actually, but primarily helicopters, I can just throttle hold, um, and uh, or if I get in a panic, I can push back. It doesn't matter. The middle is arm. So it's the same way as you can see the light. Uh, on the uh, on the quadcopter, the middle position is armed, and front and back is unarmed. So same thing. Put it in a safe mode. You can see here when it's unarmed, it says safe, and then when I arm it, it uh, defaults to rate mode. I've got a switch here that changes those flight modes, so I can go to an angle, I can go to horizon, or back to to rate using this switch here. And if I'm in horizon and I take it off arming then uh, it goes back to safe mode. So that's how that works. I have uh, a switch here. 3.9 volts. That whenever I flip it, it tells me the voltage, uh, average cell voltage. So it's monitoring uh, the total voltage and then just dividing it by the number of cells for an average. 3.9 volts. But I can just get a quick check on uh, where I'm at with my battery uh, whenever I want, audibly. And uh, I have some other things set up such as if the voltage gets below, uh, let's see, what do I have it set at here? If the vol voltage gets below 3.64, um, then uh, it will let me know that the voltage is low, and then it will tell me the voltage, and then if it gets below 3.4, it'll tell me the voltage is critical. 
it will every five seconds tell me the value of the voltage so that I'm well aware that I need to start bringing it in for a landing. So I do have some basic uh, battery telemetry there. You can see uh, I've got a screen here with the total uh, voltage count, the average cell count, and then the RSSI. And again, I can flip this switch and check voltage whenever I want. The other thing I have is uh, what I have called recovery mode. And that basically just engages the, uh, the find me beeper. So if I go down somewhere, I can flip that on and it will give me an audible alert on uh, what's going on. So that's that. Um, pretty simple, uh, but should be highly effective. And again, um, you know, safe, flip it forward in rate, and then it's good to go. So that's it. That's a quick rundown on the uh, DRQ250, the CPO FPV racing quad, uh, thanks to ReadyMade RC. And, uh, you know, appreciate any feedback, any questions you have, let me know. I'm trying to keep up with email. I get a lot of email, um, as you can imagine. So if I don't email you directly, don't feel bad. You know, if you haven't heard back from me, send me another note. Uh, it's quite quite possible that I just haven't got to it or I was planning on getting to it and then forgot it. So uh, at any rate, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.